Hello and welcome to the programme that tours the world's design studios, Concept Cars. I'm Adrian Bell. And I'm Howard Stableford. And together we will look at a new crop of machines which will never see a manufacturer's forecourt, but may pave the way for cars to come. The Concept C is a look at a new convertible that Volkswagen Audi intends to slot above the new Beetle Cabriolet, but below the Audi A4 convertible. Not just a traditional ragtop, the Volkswagen Concept C is both a hardtop coupe and a drop-top convertible. Its electro-hydraulic folding hardtop sandwiches and stacks into the boot. This is always the problem with convertibles, isn't it? Because this folding boot eats up half the cargo space in the process. Fortunately, a pass-through allows long items to be carried whether the top is raised or lowered. Unlike other folding hardtop convertibles, the Volkswagen Concept C includes a glass sunroof for those times when additional ventilation and sunshine are needed. We caught up with VW's Paul Bucket to tell us more about the Concept C's mechanics. The mechanism is totally developed uh, by Volkswagen. It's um, totally uh, electric and mechanical and you have uh, the various solid surfaces of the roof, the rails, the rear window which fold on top of one another inside the, the load space. And again you uh, retain 50% uh, of the load volume of the boot uh, for luggage. But why go for a hard top? Chris Bangle's 6 Series convertible opted for a traditional rag top. We've had soft top convertibles for a long time. It's a new piece of technology, it's high tech, it's weatherproof, it's very elegant when the roof is in place. It's not a totally new idea, true, but Volkswagen felt it was very, very competent to design a thoroughly modern, weatherproof, hard-wearing vehicle where the top is, um, you combine the benefits of a fixed hood saloon and a, and a convertible, a four-seater convertible. We are one of the leading markets in Europe for cabriolets, surprisingly, ahead of Italy and uh, Spain, the, the warmer countries. So, yes, a lot of people buy cabriolets in, in Britain, and we need uh, something for the Volkswagen range which uh, is a bit further up than the Beetle Cabriolet, which is already uh, a great success. Volkswagen tell us there are no plans to bring out a cabriolet version of the new Golf, so this concept could be the new ragtop Golf replacement. But what would its name be? We don't know the name. It's currently Concept C. It will be in the market uh, above the, uh, the current uh, Golf convertible, so it will be a premium um, convertible. There is a market for them. People like having them. And uh, if there's a, a demand, the Golf Cabriolet has been exceptionally uh, successful. And the first Beetle convertible was also very successful, as is the current one. So if people want it, and you can build such a car based on Golf mechanicals and running gear. So this vehicle will take any engine that the Golf can have up to the 3.2 litre 241 horsepower engine. So uh, uh, we think we can build a profitable convertible that will sell in uh, relatively large numbers for a convertible. But if that VW concept is a little too tame for your tastes, how about the stunning dune buggy Concept T? This is a crossover car blending a capable off-roadster and a sports car. VW shows us how the off-road and sports car worlds can be combined in future to produce a new and fascinating facet of the automotive experience, the off-road coupe. But hang on a second, Adrian. How many of us really have to go to work through a desert? Nice though these shots are. Oh yes, I think VW know that, but the purpose of these concept cars is to push the frontiers forward a little further each year, not just in the technology of the individual cars, but in the combination of styles and uses. Hey, nobody thought that texting on cell phones, or mobile phones as you Brits call them, would take off. But make the thing available and it can fly, a bit like this concept. And the Concept T is an important breakthrough. So far, no sports car has been flexible enough in terms of drive properties to allow for driving off tarmac. The Concept T fills this gap. I love the styling of the wing doors, and that paint job is so, well, red. My favorite styling bit is the V-shaped radiator grille integrated in the bumper and those eye-like headlights. The headlights float between the bumper and the wings in order to emphasize the off-road character of the car, so it looks like wheels are floating free. This concept car is propelled by a 241 brake horsepower V6 engine. This power is fed to the wheels by VW's four-motion all-wheel drive in conjunction with an automatic gearbox. So, you can tell this is aimed at the North American market. True European sports car drivers wouldn't touch auto with a barge pole. 
The Concept T accelerates to 60 in 6.9 seconds, so it's quite a nippy beast. Now here's a car you're either going to love or hate. A car penned by General Motors' team of crack designers at the Lansing Craft Center in Michigan, who obviously have young kids. You mean they drew the blueprints with crayons? No, it looks like Naughty's car, for goodness sake. It's curvier than Dolly Parton. There isn't a straight line on it. It's got more bulges than a weightlifting contest. The Chevy SSR was a crazy concept that has created such a stir that GM have actually started producing them in limited numbers. You can even import one into the UK if you really want to turn heads. In essence, it's a pickup with high-tech touches. Even the holes for attaching suspension parts have been laser cut for improved ride and handling. But what's the point? As if we care anyway just to look at it. It's a youth with a bad attitude. With two seats and a large flatbed, the SSR isn't exactly bursting with extras. Although you wouldn't think so to look at those wings. It's like a gerbil storing food in its cheeks. So if you're thinking of mowing some pedestrians, then this is the car for you. High enough to mount the curb, but not so high that they can lie down and not get pinned by the chassis. Fast enough to do the damage, then all you need is a clean hit, sending them rolling over the overly bulky bonnet through the air above and onto the rear bed. Somehow, I don't think this Chevy SSR will pass the new European Union pedestrian safety regulations. Well, if Death Ray's 2000 style driving isn't your bag, then what has this Chevrolet got to offer? Well, it's certainly no spring chicken, more like a spring onion. It stinks. And this isn't even your average eye-watering vegetable. This one, not unlike the onion, has removable skin. Keyless remote entry into the back is one of Chevrolet's safety features, along with reclining bucket seats, leather-wrapped steering wheel, and a very impressive driver information center, all of which contribute to a smooth and comfortable ride. But I just can't see why this naughty truck was designed. It's so unorthodox, with big wheels and booming curves, it really should be something more. If the SSR were anything else, it would probably be a hot air balloon. It's really big with nothing in it, but if you're looking for a pickup that's much more practical, check out this concept from Nissan, which is showing the way forward with their Pathfinder range. On the heels of launching the new extra-large Armada, Nissan opted to give the original American market Pathfinder a makeover as well. With a 4-litre engine that produces over 250 brake horsepower, the Pathfinder is never going to disappoint in the torque department. The concept has more passenger space up front and a third row seat in the back. The split second and third row seats fold individually to offer 64 different cabin configurations. These huge pickups were meant to be mean and tough utility vehicles for cowboys, both urban and rural. Now they're making them all poncy for soft landscapey gardeners. The Pathfinder's larger body surrounds a comfortable interior that offers such amenities as a DVD-based navigation system, a DVD video entertainment system, and a hi-fi audio system with a six-disc changer. Satellite radio is also available as an option, but you can only pick up the signals in North America if you are thinking of getting one of these in Europe. But Nissan still have designers thinking of the wacky stuff as well. Here's another Nissan which has a good hard look at the way information is given to the driver. This is the Jiku concept which throws out those silly little satellite navigation screens you can never place in the right location because now the entire dashboard is a huge sat-nav interface screen. The driver gets the townscape from the present and the passenger can opt to see the town as it was in history with a little narration on the car radio as well. Learn as you drive. The Nissan Jakku's actual design harks back to the 1930s, rather Art Nouveau, and the concept pays homage to the 1935 Roadster, a car which drew much influence from the little Austin 7, which the company, then Datsun, remember them, were licensed to build at one point. It shares the high, long nose, short, two-seat passenger area and open top shape. But how about this? The Roadster has a jump seat, or karakuri seat, and there's an underbonnet space or karakuri box, which is finished in ebony. Very nice. 
The headlights are designed around traditional Japanese lanterns, styled to look just like lights shining through rice paper. The wheel arches are made using a traditional metalworking technique and contrast with the bodywork in their polished silver finish. The Jiku is a beautiful piece of engineering and has been put together to mark the Nissan Motor Company's 70th anniversary. That's all for part one. Now in concept car land, it's always sunny and the occupants are always happy. But with this next concept, they've got good reason to be. It's another take on the convertible idea. It's designed for active young people so they can enjoy the thrill of open air cruising thanks to a unique center slot-in roof with glass roof panels that slide under motor power. This car's okay. It's a futuristic target top with Nissan's new compact E4WD system. So this car looks likely to be turned into a production car in some market of the world. We like our open top cars here in the UK, so would you drive a Nissan Redigo? It's a four-seater wacky convertible, but you know it reminds me of the ill-fated Renault Avantime. Nissan and Renault are now sister companies, maybe there's something in that. Now, if you like your concepts clinically clean and high-tech, you won't be disappointed by the Nissan Ephis concept. The Ephis is a city commuter car that combines Nissan's newly developed supermotor and compact lithium-ion battery with a fuel cell stack. Ephis shows one possibility for future fuel cell vehicles, or FCVs as they want us to describe them as, that will require an ultra-small, lightweight design. But you know, Howard, these guys are in cloud cuckoo land when it comes to practicality. All white interiors and dash? One rainy day with picking up kids and dogs from muddy football matches will see the car completely ruined. Ah, but this is a concept, Adrian. In concept car land, things are bigger and better. Have you ever seen a big cup holder? This is a big cup holder. But unfortunately, it has to slide away as soon as a passenger gets on board to join you for your futuristic picnic. Or, with the lack of the B-pillar, open up the doors to let some, uh, clean passengers in for a city trip. The key thing about the Nissan Ephis concept is the power plant. The FCV engine is a big breakthrough in motive technology. The revolutionary new two-in-one super supermotor has two output shafts, so driving force can be distributed to the right and left wheels independently. And with the use of the lithium-ion batteries, which you probably use in your video camera and cell phone, uh, mobile phone, you Brits are so cute. Anyway, lithium-ion means you get no memory power effect, plus the battery pack is very slimline. No more lead-acid misery. The Nissan Ephis concept. Yet another step forward in the march towards the highly efficient, lightweight, electric city car. Arousing farmers around the globe is Toyota's new FTX concept truck, which was first unveiled at this year's North American International Auto Show in the not-so-sunny Detroit. Toyota's full-size pickup really is just that. At a menacing 19 feet long and 7 feet wide, the FTX is a bit of a monster. Huge, bulky fenders and a bigger grill than a Texan barbecue add to its already imposing status. So it does have the typical futuristic feel that's not uncommon to concept cars, and this alone makes me wonder whether it's really suitable for work. The large flatbed and cleverly hidden ramp in the tailgate do make for a great working car, but it just seems too sleek and stylish to be loaded with filthy building tools. Be a shame to scratch this lot, wouldn't it? No doubt, two years down the line, Toyota's FTX will emerge a lot less suitable for being entered into wacky races. But until then, we're not convinced. It isn't, however, without some nice additions. When folded away, this automatic sidestep adds to the concept truck's smooth exterior. And it's really quite functional, too. Behind the step, I'm told, are a number of storage bins, perfect for housing those pig's ears you've been lopping off all day. And with built-in tow hooks, a combination generator, an air compressor, and an electrical output hidden under the bed, Toyota's metal donkey makes a great utility vehicle. The generous use of shape in the concept's body gives a slick, high-priced feel that makes it appear much more than just a work truck. But then again, when have you ever seen a farmer with style?
So much of this series has designs from around the world, but this one has its roots in the UK. For a manufacturer that has been around for as long as Land Rover, it's amazing that the Range Stormer concept is the company's first ever concept leading to a planned production model. Land Rover are desperate to get a larger foothold in the important North American SUV sector and they've realized that diversity is very important and the Range Stormer indicates a new direction for the company. You're definitely looking at a concept car. The Range Stormer will not go on sale as it is, but certainly a version of it will go into showrooms in the next few years. It hints strongly at a new full-size Land Rover, their first sports tourer SUV. While not as extreme as the concept, Land Rover tell us that the production vehicle will be the fastest, best handling and most spirited vehicle they have ever made. This, with the amazing heritage and world renown, should make the eventual production vehicle a winner. Surely they can't go wrong, especially with Ford's might now behind the company. And I love the interior of the Range Stormer. The leather, the aluminium, it just goes so well together. Well, what the car is representing is a, is a a production vehicle is coming from Land Rover in the near future, so this is a real precursor to that production vehicle. And what's different about it? What technologies are going to be used in this that are, that are new? Um, I guess the, the headline technology is uh, terrain response, which is uh, a very easy to use uh, facility that the driver dials in the, uh, the correct setting for the vehicle when it's um, in any drive, particular driving condition. So off-road, on-road, uh, he chooses the, the, the dial uh, setting and the car responds accordingly. Now how long has it taken to develop this particular concept and what ideas were you particularly interested in? Um, we started on this, on this concept in uh, around about February this year, earlier this year, uh, last year sorry, it's 2004 now. Um, so uh, yeah, February, February this, uh, last year and uh, completed it just before the show here at Detroit. Right. But why the name Range Stormer? We deliberated a long time over the, over the name. Uh, range, uh, as I say, is a, uh, the, part, the range part of the name is a sort of precursor to what's coming. Uh, it sort of positions the car in people's minds. It's, uh, it's going to be a sporty, exclusive uh, vehicle. And the Stormer, um, well, we wanted to create, create a little bit of a, a stir here in Detroit. It's a, it's a really uh, a very competitive arena in which to uh, show a concept car. So we're hoping that we've created enough interest for, uh, uh, for us with, with, with the vehicle. The Range Stormer is powered by a supercharged PAG-sourced V8 engine and it features the new terrain response system which is described as being an advanced electronic control that improves the vehicle's go-anywhere ability and makes life simpler for the driver. Terrain response on Range Stormer is controlled by a rotary switch that offers the driver a choice of six settings that prime the vehicle to the current conditions. All clever stuff. What annoys me about the current crop of sports utility vehicles is that everything's a compromise and that most owners will never turn a wheel off-road. At last, it looks as if Land Rover are in the midst of creating a sporty, great-looking SUV that will cut the mustard in the mud as well as on the tarmac. But Land Rover aren't the only good name in the world of 4x4. America has Jeep, and this is the rescue concept as unveiled at the Detroit show. Basically, they've combined Jeep's off-road capability with state-of-the-art search and rescue technology. The Jeep Rescue may not look that spectacular, but it's a full-sized version of those kids' toy trucks that seem to be indestructible. The concept is designed to reach places in the harshest, most daunting mountainous and desert areas. It's a modern interpretation of the timeless, classic Jeep. The Rescue not only hints at a future design direction for a large Jeep, the Rescue can be configured to run almost totally open with folding front windshield and a retractable backlight, a sliding glass sunroof in front, a fold forward canvas roof in the rear, plus all four doors are removable. I guess you could use them as a makeshift stretcher in an emergency. It's an attempt to look at an, another variation of the Jeep brand. The Jeep is a, is a brand that uh, is world renowned, uh, has been around for a lot longer than any of the would be's. Um, and, uh, and I think it's a, it's a very successful look at uh, where Jeep could go to extend this uh, rescue capability that Jeep has established for itself ever since the war years. 
powered by a powerful Cummins diesel and featuring seating for five, the Jeep Rescue's primary mission is rescue capability, and its list of rescue and safety equipment is impressive. All the rescue operations people that uh, would need, need that sort of capability, whether it be military or whether it be fire operations or mountain patrols or uh, uh, forestry commission, uh, you name it, there are many organizations that would require the capabilities of the vehicle. Certainly not many of us would require that, but there are many, many, many establishments that, uh, for which there really isn't a dedicated vehicle that uh, does a job like that. Since the unveiling of this concept at Detroit, so many emergency services have been knocking on Jeep's door, we predict the rescue could become a reality from the concept beginnings. The Mazda MX Flexa is a mini MPV of the future from Mazda's European styling studios. The MX Flexa may not be the most awe-inspiring concept on the block, but Mazda are building on the incredible sales success of the 6 and 6 estate. If families need a little more space but not enough to buy the Mazda MPV, confusingly called MPV, then the Flexa could be the answer. The Flexa, of course, stands for flexibility, demonstrated by the ingenious bike rack system inside. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this week's Concept Cars. Join Adrian and myself next time for some more beautiful, bizarre, or just plain balmy creations. <laughs>